Good morning, day 105 in our series 2 to 5. This morning, I don't know if you guys seen that frozen river, but this is kind of this is kind of what I'm the vibe I'm I'm picking up and and putting out this morning, frozen river. Uh, a lot of whites in here. I just need like a like a rifle or a gun or something. Look like uh, Jeremy Renner. So, just top of mind, it's a little, it's fresh. Uh, watched that the other night. Fantastic movie, by the way, if you guys get a chance to watch it. Um, doesn't have a damn thing to do with what, you know, we're doing here this morning, other than the fact that it's a movie. A similarity, I guess. But, anyway, uh, this morning, I am back working on the same scene that I thought I had finished up. Um, again, went back through it and not big things, but just a couple little things that I wanted to, um, to fix this morning. I'm still a little concerned about, um, cutting from one close up to another close up that has a different um, sort of level of clarity to it. Like, like we had talked about before, I've got some close-ups that I've, I've forced into a close-up because there were other things going on within the frame. So I zoomed in on one particular part that was, was good. But then it cuts from that close-up to another like legit close-up. And each, either one of them in isolation is fine because I, I've denoised it and, and so forth. But when you cut from one close up to another close up and one is, was, was shot that way. And another one was sort of manufactured. Um, it, it kind of calls out the difference between the two. You don't notice it as much if you're cutting from like a wide shot to a close up, you, you know, it's just not as obvious. Um, but one close up to another, it, it, it is. So I'm not really sure exactly. I've, I've denoised it about as much as I can. Um, but zooming in this far, you're just you're just not going to get the same level of clarity as you do on one that you legit shot that way. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if, and I probably won't do it right now, but I'm just a, a note that I'm I'm keeping in my mind um, is maybe putting just a little bit of a of a blur on some of the other close-ups just to soften them a little bit so that they're more closer. Um, in terms of clarity to the, the ones that I've manufactured. Because the ones I've manufactured do have a little bit more of that movie look. It's a little bit more softer. Um, but I just want to make sure they're consistent between the two. So, And when I go back to edit, um, I'm going to do a little bit of editing on the like big screen. And uh, so I'll be able to see what it looks like uh, at that point and which one actually looks better up there. So... That's what I'm working on so far this morning. Um, hopefully get this one finished up for real and uh, and then move on to the next one and move on to some writing. So, yay. All right, so wrapping up the editing this morning. Um, this one, again, uh, was a little bit of a, of a challenge. I returned back to it this morning and uh, found a couple more issues. Uh, one thing I did learn, and I wasn't able to really do it on this one, but at least moving forward, um, it's something I'm going to try and keep in mind. Um, this one, there was there were so many issues with this. There was um, issues with um, looking at the camera. Uh, There's issues with the light. There's issues with some some exaggerated acting. Um, the camera was glitchy, I think, because the batteries were running low, so it would just freeze for a couple seconds. So there was you know, portions of, of different shots that were just, they weren't usable at all. Um, so a lot of different, different issues. You had, I had to kind of cobble this one together, which is not ideal. You would like to be able to, you know, once you determine where the focus should be, be able to, you know, go there, but you can't always do that because there's just issues with it. Um, but like I said, one thing I did learn on this one is that the movement within the master shots is, is important. Um, one of the master shots, or one of the times that I um, cut to a master shot, there was there was a little bit of movement in it, and I think it was inadvertent on my part because I wasn't trying to like move in with the camera. I think it was just you know me moving while I was 
I was holding the camera, but I liked it. It felt like I was sort of kind of sweeping into the scene and getting a little bit closer, which if you notice in movies, that's a lot of times what they do is they'll start off with that master shot and either, you know, pan left or right, right to left, um, or, or they'll push in on it just to get you in, start you off at a distance and then get you in a little bit closer. But because with this one, I had to cut from, you know, from close-ups and then sometimes cut back to a master shot, uh, just because I didn't have any other, any other shots, it's hard for me to sort of push in and then, and then pull back out and then you know, cut to a close up and then back back out again with movement in there. So um, I wasn't really able to do that with this one, but I did notice uh, that I, I liked it. Um, so something I'm gonna keep in mind moving forward if I have an opportunity where I can just you know, start off with the master shot or only have to cut to it maybe once and put some movement in there, that was helpful. I mean, it just, not having static shots is important. And I've, I've been noticing that a lot and just watching movies and, and television that they, one of the things that they do to sort of keep you interested and keep, and, you know, keeping a rhythm or a flow to it is that they will introduce movement into the frame. So, uh, but yeah, I'm done with the, um, with the uh, editing this morning. I'm going to do a little bit of writing uh, and then... That'll be it. Man, this was a nice one to, to be done with. It was it was a bit of a mess. And, uh, you know, I feel like we've got something. A few more little tweaks that can be made, but uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with this one so far. So, yes. Wrapping up the writing this morning. Um, did you know, fun fact, that Cheese Whiz takes out grease stains from your clothes. What? That's what I read. Just doing some research. Um, I've got a scene in here where Lisa has a grease stain and was looking for different ways to um, to get it out. Sort of using the environment that you have and what things, uh, you know, this other person that's helping her, Karen, um, would have at her disposal. Cheese Whiz gets out grease stains. So you're supposed to, like, you just smear it on there and then just throw it in the wash. You don't even have to let it sit. Well, okay then. I don't know if I'm going to use that one or not. There's this, uh, this website had like 14 different ways to remove it. Um, there was a couple other ones that would probably make a little more sense, but if there is a way I can find to get Cheese Whiz in there, bet your ass I'm doing it. That's awesome. So, yeah. So good stuff this morning. Um, nice to get the writing in, as always. Uh, I always like the balance. Um, some days just can't happen. Uh, I like to... Um, I like to finish up the editing. I like to get to a good stopping point with the editing, and sometimes I just I just run out of time. Um, but when I can get to a nice, clean cut on the edit, uh, in terms of, of finishing that and a good place to start the next day, and I also have time to do the the writing, that's ideal. And uh, I was able to get that done this morning. So, yeah, we're still making progress, still moving forward. So thank you guys for taking this ride, giving me a watch, and uh, I don't know, coming along with me on this, this journey. It's gonna be, uh, it's a lot harder than I thought, quite honestly. Uh, a lot, lot more involved. Um, but like anything else, you discover if it's something that you really like, and you don't know till you, till you, till you give it a shot and see. I think there are very few things very few things that get me up at two o'clock in the morning and uh, so I would say you know if that's the only time you got uh, if it gets you out of bed at two o'clock in the morning that's a pretty good indicator of uh, direction that you need to go so anyway my two cents sometimes we have a hard time trying to figure out well, what do I want to do and where do I want to go and you know what if it gets your ass out of bed at two <laughs> Not too many things will do that, so pay attention to those. So. 
Anyway, thank you guys. Tomorrow, too.